Now, the Walkley for the most outstanding contribution to journalism is selected by the Walkley trustees, Walkley Director and Vice President of the MEAA National Media Section. Karen Percy joins us on the stage for official duties. And this award is supported by our broadcast partner, Sky News, and will be presented by Paul Whitaker. So, let's find out some more about our winner in this special video tribute. I'm absolutely certain that most of my colleagues and all my bosses believe that for the last 30 to 40 years, this has been my life covering the Pacific. Unfortunately, it's really been like this. The police forces stretch to the absolute limit with riot police making up a good proportion of the security forces on Bougainville. For more than four decades, Papua New Guinea was my home base. To cover some incredible stories, I even got to captain the National Rugby League team. Sean Dorney sends a long pass to London, and it's a try for Papua New Guinea. Now I'm living back in Australia and facing my toughest assignment yet, trying to beat a deadly disease. But while I still can, I'm determined to show you the Papua New Guinea that few Australians get to see and a place that I have come to love. I've known it since before independence in 1975 as a reporter, husband and a father. I married a proud Papua New Guinean, Pauline Nare, the daughter of a chief. And we're heading back to her remote home village, Tulu, on, of all places, Manus Island. The thing is, I've got motor neurone disease and have trouble walking, let alone getting out of a boat. Eventually, my whole body will shut down. I may have just two years left to live, but this rotten disease is not going to stop me from soaking up the embrace of my extended family. There used to be four full-time Australian correspondents based here. Now, it's down to just one. I feel it's crucial that Australians are told about what's going on in our nearest neighbour and former colony. It actually appalls me. Having somebody like you as, as a person that, for so many of us journalists in Papua New Guinea and across the Pacific, paved the way for us, uh, get, get, set a benchmark for us, really, like that was... That was the mark, you know, and, um, and we're, we're proud because, you know, you're ours too. Um, it's just been a blessing and it's been an honour and um, we love you so much, Sean. Thank you. Sean's reporting for decades has, has brought the Pacific to life for many, many Australians and there is no reporter in Australia with the depths of context, with the understanding of history, with the insight that Sean brings as he reports on the region. Pauline, though, keeps my feet firmly planted. Conniving, <laughs> never home. Yeah. Forgets people's birthdays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's never considered. I believe that I married down instead of up. If only there were more relationships like ours, then the relationship between the two countries might be a hell of a lot better.
Can I, first of all, apologise for my rather slow approach to the microphone? I'm not quite as nimble as I once was, and regrettably, my days playing halfback for the Papua New Guinea Cornwalls are long gone. As you have heard, I've got motor neurone disease, MND. I volunteered for some research into this absolute bugger of a disease. And so last week, at the Royal Brisbane Hospital, they loaded me into an MRI machine, and for two 45-minute periods, I had a brain scan. To Pauline's surprise, they found I had one, <laughs> a, a brain. In fact, when they showed her a snapshot of my brain, she asked what the black holes were. That's where his memory's supposed to be, one of them said in jest. Pauline replied, that's no joke, that's right. As you would have gathered from that video taken from the ABC foreign correspondent item about our return to Pauline's village on Manus earlier this year, I married a very formidable woman. Pauline's only complaint to Ben Hawke, the producer, was that he took the microphone away from her before she could really open up about this creature she married. <laughs> I'm absolutely thankful to Ben. As many of you know, Ben Hawke is actually the ABC's executive producer of Landline. But he spreads his talents all around the ABC and he somehow convinced foreign correspondent there might be some value in putting me briefly back to work. We've had a fantastic response to that item on Foreign Correspondent. And so, Ben, thanks, and the ABC is lucky to have a gem like you. In fact, this is how good he is. He convinced Pauline to allow an ABC camera team to visit her village, something I couldn't have done. Incidentally, the ABC did have three complaints about the program, all from animal rights campaigners who were apparently horrified at seeing four seconds of a live pig on a pole being placed at my feet when they made me a chief of Pauline's clan. When the ABC told us not to worry that it would respond to these complaints, Pauline asked if it would help if the ABC told the complainers she found the pig delicious. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted to accept this most prestigious award. I loved working for the ABC, although there was some times that some in the organisation had a somewhat less than appreciative view of me. Many years ago, when I was the PNG correspondent based in Moresby, there was one particular scandal involving corrupt payments funnelled through Singapore. I reported extensively on it for the ABC for various news and current affairs programs. The late Robert Keith Reid from Fiji, who had launched his specific wide regional magazine, Islands Business, got in touch asking me if I could knock something together for him. Back then, the ABC frowned on its correspondence names appearing in print. So for a great mate, I used the pseudonym Jared Dockeray. This Dockeray fellow provided Robert with five pages of copy. There was a main story and two breakout pieces, one on the great work that PNG's then corruption watchdog, the Ombudsman Commission, was doing, and another on the debate on the whole affair in the PNG Parliament, which was not so much about corruption as about the horror some members had about the Ombudsman investigating them. Robert gave these stories a very handsome spread. It was the cover story illustrated by a PNG flag with a big corruption stamp on it. A few days after publication, Robert rang me from Fiji chortling. He said he'd just had a call from the ABC in Sydney wanting a contact number for this Gerard Dockeray fellow. <laughs> I told them the guy's in a sensitive position and it was a concocted name, he said. But I told them, why don't you get in touch with your own correspondent there, Sean Dorney? Robert could hardly contain his mirth. You know what I was told, Robert went on? 
Oh, look, Sean's all right for some things, but this Dockeray fellow seems to know what's going on. <laughs> There are not enough journalists in Australia these days who do follow what is going on in PNG, our former colony and nearest neighbour. It's called the land of the unexpected, and no wonder. The poorest country in APEC, it buys 40 Maseratis for two days' work. And then the security forces, who helped ensure APEC was trouble-free in a security sense, wait for all the leaders to leave and then rampage destructively through the parliament protesting over their unpaid allowances. I just pray that this China-inspired refocus on PNG in the Pacific is maintained, not only by the Australian government, but by the Australian media. It is the most extraordinary and fascinating place as a journalist to work. I find it fitting that we gather each year to celebrate some of the best our profession has to offer. I was amused at a recent cartoon in one of the daily newspapers following Virgin's suggestion that it would honour Australian servicemen by allowing them to leave the aircraft first. In the cartoon, there were only a few people left on board and the flight attendant said, next, the charity scammers and the used car salesmen. So that just leaves the journalists. <laughs> Bottom of the pile, but never. I didn't know that Donald Trump inspired cartoonists, on matters apart from himself, of course. But I firmly believe that our pre profession, journalism, is an honourable one. Throughout my career, I have always strived to tell it straight. And in telling it like it is and informing the public, we can be a powerful force for good. So, from a guy who is apparently good for some things, I'd just like to say thanks very much to the Walkerley Foundation and to everyone here, and a special thanks to those like Sue Ahern who pushed my nomination for this award. Thank you very much.